Hey everyone, welcome back to Better Biomed. Today I'm extremely excited because I made a couple of purchases and they finally arrived. I've got several of these electrical safety analyzers, old ones from my past, which I was able to acquire off of eBay. People ask me all the time, where can I get inexpensive test equipment? And if you keep your eyes open, it's out there. And I think that some of these are really good deals. So anyway, I got each of these for around, uh, let's say about $200 with shipping. So two different electrical safety analyzers. This one that I'm gonna showcase today is the 232D, which is made by DNI Nevada. Now, if you guys don't know, DNI Nevada, they made some really solid products. And it's almost a shame that their products have gone away. I think uh, Fluke bought them out. But uh, DNI made invincible products. They were incredibly good. But anyway, here I got a 232 electrical uh, safety analyzer. And uh, it's also got an ECG simulator analyzer. Very cool, nice piece of kit. And uh, this one here I bought, I think for around $200. Um, it does need a repair though. So let's go ahead and take a look at this analyzer and I'll show you what I found so far, what I'm gonna do to fix it. And let's take a look inside the guy because there's a lot of stuff going on inside these old DNI Nevada analyzers. Here we go guys. So this is my Kelvin cable or my Kelvin test cable. Came with the analyzer which is fortunate because many of them, many of these that are for sale online do not have that cable. But that's okay. Here's the analyzer. You can see it's got all the hold on lugs for your ECG. You've got your regular receptacle. Notice that this guy is only 15 amps. It is not a 20 amp analyzer. Well that's okay. Most stuff that we're going to test anyway is only going to be 15 amp anyway. So who cares? This layout here, I love. I I love the metal case. I love the overlay. I love physical buttons. You guys know. I talk about this kind of stuff all the time. It's got analog knobs with select functions. Guess what? Every single one of these functions probably still works on this analyzer. I haven't powered it up yet, but I'm telling you that almost every single thing on this probably works, even though these buttons have probably been pressed hundreds if not thousands of times, maybe tens of thousands of times. And this guy is still in reasonably good condition considering. Um, notice that it has ECG functions right here. Uh, right here is when we do lead to lead for uh, doing an analyzer. This is your main mode function. Uh, so some of the things that we will test mainly is going to be system voltage. You can do L1 to L2, uh, L1 to ground, L2 to ground. This here uh, helps you find faults. So there's that. One of the first things we do with an electrical safety test though is the power cord resistance. You guys know that. And then after we're done with that, then we're going to do external case leakage. And uh, for that, we have our polarity switch like most of these old systems do. So for the most part, we're going to keep it on normal. So that's normal polarity. That actually closes your neutral. And uh, that means that you're ready to go. Oh, look at this. So this one, some analyzers, like another one that I'm going to showcase, it's got a switch for the neutral to open it or close it, a rocker switch like this. But that's okay. I actually dig this layout right here. So let's see, external case leakage. Um, one of the things I love about electrical safety analyzers is that they are measurement tools for current. And that means if you have a device that's popping fuses or if it sounds like it's running hot, um, you know, like a motor is working a little too hard, you can hook it up into here and you can monitor the current. Most electrical safety analyzers have this function and I don't know too many biomeds that use it, but I have had to use amperage before and um, it's on your electrical safety analyzer. You don't have to whip out your multimeter. You can just plug it in right here and see how much current it's using. It's a good feature. So anyway, uh, over here we've got uh, microamps, millivolts, milliohms uh, for the external meter functions. And then there's a self-test down here so that you can test out your analyzer yourself. These are all your ECG functions as I kind of jumped around. Um, so interlead, and then these ones here are all your yada yada, you get it. Uh, any of you guys that have been biomeds. But anyway, one of the functions that's really special is this one right here, ISO. And I might be incorrect, but I don't know if this has a step-up transformer for this. Because normal ISO, 
it's uh, like 10,000 volts, 5,000 volts, something like that for normal ISO or, or mega tests. But this one here says line voltage applied to ECG leads. So I don't know if that's actually just switching over the 120 volts to these. But anyway, what it does is it tests the electrical integrity between your, um, your measurement conductor and your ground conductor, your shielding conductor. So what it's going to do is it's going to apply 120 volts to this and your it's going to measure it against this, you know, um, to see if there's any leakage. That's what your ISO test is. And I don't know of anybody that's been shocked by that, but I imagine you could because look at all those. Maybe that's why they changed the design on this. I've never heard of anybody stupid enough to press this button and get uh, shocked, but I know there's probably somebody. Uh, DC only? I don't know about that one. If you guys know about DC only, tell me. Is, is that for uh, DC leakage? I don't even know. I'm really curious about that. Never touch that button. You know how it is. If, if you don't know what it does, then don't touch it, right? So most of the things that we do are going to be checking your mains voltage because everywhere is different. And we used to have to roll through these uh, to make sure that you didn't have um, re reverse polarity. So on any of these outlets, between the small pin and your ground pin, that is gonna be your hot to ground. So between neutral to ground, or what would that be, L2 to ground? There should be zero volts, and this one here, there should be 120 volts, except for isolated power systems, to which you'll see 60 some volts on one pin, 60 some volts on the other pin, and between the two, pin to pin, you will get 120 volts. So this guy here helps you quickly diagnose your electrical system, you just have to have some sort of comprehension over what pin is supposed to do what. Anyway. It's very cool. I love analog functions because as what I would think is an advanced troubleshooter, this here helps me get to the meat and taters of the problem a little bit quicker and equipment current. I use that one quite often. So I do have uh, this your master or your mains power switch. It, it's triggering this for mains. Um, you see they were very smart on this. They have a 15 amp fuse right here. <laughs> anyway, you do have fuses up here. You have external meter and you have a current source. And when you measure, you normally measure between these two, I believe, with this guy right here. Again, it has been a while since I have used this device and this older style Kelvin cable. But uh, this guy here will go between a couple of the pins and you're off and running. I will, of course, do some research before I hook it up and start checking things, but there you go. So the problem that I had with this guy, you can see right here, somebody has already been inside this, and there is some sort of historical fix to it. You guys know I, I do not like crimp connectors, all right? I do not, especially on an electrical safety meter. That is wrong. Whoever did that, you're wrong, all right? crimp connectors on an electrical safety meter. So either a continuous piece of wire or a soldered and shrink tube connection should be here. This is really not a good solution. Whoever did that, very bad. You can see right here what happened is a couple of my female banana plugs, which are through panel fittings right here, they broke and since the head popped off, they just fall inside the unit. There's another reason why I'm not powering it up because that will, of course, short something out. So I looked to the gods over at Amazon and I was able to track down a package of these guys right here for like eight bucks. I dig it. All right. So female through panel connectors. Found them on Amazon. Awesome. I'll leave the information on these in the description below. Super easy. But as I've said in other videos, I never really do a half ass job on my repairs. So I have to fix that, I have to fix those, and I'm gonna change these guys out as well. And one of the reasons I'm changing them out is because you can see the head right here, it's got metal threads, you see that? Versus these ones, which have plastic threads, and they had a plastic kind of uh, mushroom head that was keeping it captive right here. So that's it. Versus these ones, but you can see they have a metal collar all the way at the top. So all the load is between that metal and that metal. The plastic is not load bearing. So 
I will not have this problem with it breaking ever again. So I just have to make sure I do a, a really good soldering job on these. Uh, make sure that you know they're all fluxed and everything when I solder them. And I have to obviously fix that and see what's going on there. But that's it. It should be a functional device after that. So I've got a couple transformers right here. I haven't uh, checked too far into it yet to see if one of them is an isolation transformer or not. Um, but like I already said, one of them might be a step-up transformer. Uh, here's the part numbers. I'll have to look those up later, see if I can even find that part information. Um, but if it's a step-up transformer, then one of those would be for the ECG leads for the ISO test. Not really sure. I'm just kind of maybe making that assumption. Right here's your ECG uh, breakout board. You can see right here is the mains that comes in. And from there, it goes down to the main switch. And from there, it comes over to your fuses. And right here is the receptacle, or the back of the receptacle. Which, these receptacles that they use in these analyzers were bulletproof. These things didn't have the problem of the widening blades like some of the modern day units do. These were very well made receptacles. This one here is still tight. I just tested it just a few moments ago. So if you ever have one of these and you're getting some erratic readings, one of the things you might want to consider is go through and check your electrolytic capacitors. Because as these things get older, your electrolytics, they do have a shelf life. You see back here is one. So if you ever have a problem with one of these getting erratic readings, definitely go through and, and check your electrolytics. They will either be bulging, leaking, or maybe they just die with no symptoms whatsoever. It does happen, guys. Um, so you can see I've got some large relays right here, and these control a lot of the functionality. So when you activate mains and whatnot uh, to a, for the device under test, these right here are some of the guys that are clickety-clacking and making things happen. These are your rotary selector knobs, analog knobs. Big old honking knobs, I dig it. You can tell this guy is just well made. It just really is. So uh, right here is the main chip, obviously. Um, what is that, a voltage regulator? Anytime you, you see, um, yeah, hold on. Whoop. Anytime you see uh, large capacitors, there's almost definitely gonna be some uh, voltage regulation. That's probably a, a power supply right over there. And let's see, I haven't checked yet. But your mains is going to come in and it's going to go into a bridge rectifier to supply DC for this board. And I haven't taken a look into it enough to find that yet. Oh, let's see, we got some clickety clack right here, some mains. DC, yes, yeah, so that's got to be your power supply section right over here. Obviously, they want that as far away from some of your other sections as possible. And you can also tell because right here are the wires that come over to your transformers. All right. So one of them is probably a step down transformer, which then goes over to a rectifying diode. And from there, it uh, just gets converted to DC. And you know, there's gonna be one voltage regulator almost certainly for your logic, but um, your other ones are probably gonna be for powering your ECG functions and whatnot. That's probably some of these chips over here. But uh, very cool stuff, guys. Very cool. It's got uh, large ribbon cables, a lot of hand soldering on a lot of these connections. I could see, you know, look at this. Whoever's been in here. You know, somebody's might have been in here before. Uh, that or that's from the factory. It's hard to tell. But if you do have erratic problems, you might want to open up your device and check it out. Stuff like this is a no-go. Absolute no-go. All right, so if you ever have some of those connections inside, you might want to make sure you get those remedied. And after you do anything to this whatsoever, you obviously have to ship it out and get it recertified. So even if it was just fixing a terminal or something like that, you have to go and get it recertified. And that's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to go ahead and fix those, fix that, and uh, I'll be right back. All right, everyone. Here we go. I was able to complete the repairs, to which you can see right here. I've got all new lugs put in. These are female banana connectors. And I repaired the wiring, checked it with an ohm meter, 
we're doing good there. So these were all standardized. Now we're ready to go. I checked this little ground conductor here. It looks like somebody touched it off with a soldering iron. And also I found some scatter of old solder just in and around the, the insides. So I cleaned all that out. Here are all my old connectors. So these guys can go straight in the trash. And I have never powered this guy up, so you guys are going to find out the exact same time as me. Was this a solid investment? So I, there's a clearance in there for the transformers versus the circuit boards, and I had 180 out. So I only got one fastener with this guy, and these are tiny taper heads, so I have to find a replacement for that uh, for all the other threes. And I'll do that, but just go ahead and screw it together so that I'm somewhat safe about this. I looked up on the user manual, and in order to do standard electrical safety, you plug your Calvin cable into these two right here. And put it down, and let me get a power cord. Okay, here we go. I've got a nice heavy duty medical grade power cord. Let's see what happens, see if it even powers up. Powers off, plugged in. Let's see, polarity is currently off. Yeah, leave it off. All right, immediately it does power up. I have a 1000 for the current source active, so it is I'll have to look that up and see if that's doing an auto test on internal load resistors. Um, it's been a while. So earlier I said that uh, L1 was hot. That's incorrect. L1 is considered neutral to ground. And L2, which is at the very top of the list here, that would be hot to ground. So up here, hot to ground. Yep, correct polarity. We should get 120. We should have no more than five or six volts on L1 to ground, which is neutral to ground. And then we have uh, L1 to L2, which is neutral to uh, hot, which, of course, that's what you're gonna get. All right, so for power cord resistance, what we're going to do is, I'm gonna hook this bad boy up. I just so happen to have a patient monitor here. And if you guys ever need patient monitors, you let me know. I have a fresh supply of these Walsh Allen 6000 series Connex and I am making some deals. It's not gonna happen. Let's do it like this, all right. Okay, there we go. So I'm getting 19 on milliohms. So the device under test is off. External case leakage, and let's go ahead and open ground on normal polarity. No change. Let's do ground conductor. No change. Of course, it's off. So let's go ahead and turn on the device. There we go. So it should go up because now your battery charging circuit is now active. And let's go ahead and open ground. Looks like we're doing okay. So this meter so far looks like it's doing really good. So I, I did some reading and the ISO test is throwing 120 volts to these pins, but it's only at one milliamp if I remember correctly. That's still quite a bit, all right? Uh, 120 volts, you still are probably gonna get poked. So they still have that button. Um, here we go, reverse polarity, open, neutral. There we go, okay. So it detects that uh, I opened the neutral on the medical device. Let's do normal. And open those to see. Okay, so I'm gonna send this device out and get it calibrated and just to be sure that everything looks like it's working absolutely fine. Over here, I didn't go over some of the other features of the device which are pretty cool features. So we got square wave over here and we got different degrees of sine wave 
and uh, then we got triangle. You can throw those up on your ECG, but at the same time, I have seen people use electrical safety analyzers to inject frequencies into a device under test to test for um, filter circuits and stuff. So I've, I've seen some pretty cool stuff on here. And um, let's see, then we got 30 to 240 BPM if you want to test alarm levels and stuff like that. But uh, overall, cool device, cost me $200. And here we go, it is running. Everything seems to be completely functional. And I think we're ready to go. Anyway guys, I hope you like this video. If you do, please give me a thumbs up down below. And I've got another electrical safety analyzer that we're gonna bring in as soon as I get the correct cable and connector for the Kelvin test. And then I will also open that guy up. We'll check it out and uh, take a look. But uh, anyway, guys, thank you very much for watching. And uh, stay tuned because I have some other cool videos that I'm going to be working on very soon.